Senator Obama has been a member of the same church in Chicago for 20 years, where his pastor has been Reverend Jeremiah Wright, the man who performed the Obama's marriage ceremony, and the man Obama credits for the title of his book, The Audacity of Hope. Government gives them the drugs, builds bigger prisons, passes a three-strike law, and then wants us to sing God bless America? No, no, no. Not God bless America. God damn America that's in the Bible for killing innocent people. God damn America for treating us citizens as less than human. And they will not only attack you if you try to point out what's going on in white America, U.S. of KKKA. They live below the sea level they live below the level of Clarence colon and condemnesia we bombed Hiroshima we bombed Nagasaki and we nuked far more than the thousands in New York and the Pentagon and we never batted an eye we have supported state terrorism against the Palestinians and black South Africans and now we are indignant because the stuff we have done overseas is now brought right back into our own front yards America's chickens are coming home to roost. Or it's time to move on. It's like saying to a woman who has been repeatedly raped over and over and over and over and over and over, you need to get over the hell I do. Get the sucker who's been raping me and make him pay. Well, America has been raping people of color and America has to pay the price for the rape. How dare you say get over it? I would not allow them to tear down Medgar. I would not allow them to tear down Malcolm. And I'll be damned if I'm going to sit back while you tear down Farrakhan and Jeremiah Wright. How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? Seek to reduce Jeremiah Wright, who's one of the greatest biblical scholars this nation has, to a 30-second sound beat and try to demonize him and trivialize him. You cannot do that. enough to address the one who says mm, well don't hold me responsible for what my ancestors did but you have enjoyed the benefits of what your ancestors did and unless you are ready to give up the benefits throw away your 401 fund throw away your trust fund throw away all the money that's been put away in the company you walked into because your daddy and your granddaddy and your great daddy unless you're willing to give up the benefits then you must be responsible for what was done in your generation because you are the beneficiary of this insurance policy
want you. We don't like you. But we'll give you justice. Now what does justice look like? If you add it up, trying to bamboozle you. Every election year, these politicians are sent up here to pacify right. They're sent here and set up here by the white man. This That's what they do. They try to bamboozle you. Hoodwink you. <laughs> try to hoodwink you. <laughs> You've been hoodwinked, bamboozled, led astray, run on muck. This is what he does. When Hillary was crying, and people said that was put on, I really don't believe it was put on. I really believe that she just always thought, this is mine. I'm Bill's wife. I'm white. And this is mine. I just got to get up and step into the plate. And then out of nowhere came, hey, I'm Barack Obama. And she said, oh, damn, where did you come from? I'm white. I'm entitled that the black man stealing my show. She wasn't the only one crying. There was a whole lot of white people crying. The only reason there's a drug war today is because drugs got in the wrong backyards and now some folk are upset. It went beyond where we're supposed to go. I bring to you one who has continued to stand up and speak out and who has been a lover of truth, one of integrity, and one of character, and one who is owned by nobody but God. But I just want you to know that this man is my brother. And for all those that want to say he's anti-white and he's anti-Semitic, liars from the pit of hell. He has stood in support of me when nobody else was supporting me. I was saying to him on the way, and I remember when that mural went up in 1984, and 12 black pastors came to me and said, take that thing down, you're starting trouble. But the minister said, thank God, somebody has put up a mural that we can look at. Welcome with me, my brother, whom I love, Minister Louis Farrakhan. We don't have slave masters, we got mayors, but they still the same white people who are presiding over systems where black people are not able or to be educated. You got some preachers that are house -made. You got some elected officials that are house niggas, and rather than them trying to break this up, they gon' fight you to protect that white man. Condition. Based on the skin condition, the community said you're a second class citizen because of the skin condition. They, they, they live in the projects, I mean a colony, because of the skin condition. They didn't have proper health care because of the skin 
skin condition. They were disrespected because of the skin condition. Ah, yes, they did not have, they had, they had inferior education because of the skin condition. They had low birth weights because of the skin condition. They had high infant mortality because of the skin condition. They did not eat the right foods because of their skin condition. They were not supposed to run for president because of their skin condition, but they refused to give up. They said, well, what the heck? We might as well leave. We've got nothing to lose. But wait a minute. They don't go into Samaria, which is the city that put them in exile, that actually had their relatives. They go into the enemy's camp. You completely missed it. They said, we know we'll die if we go home because the people at home are having a famine. We know we'll die if we stay here. But maybe our enemies could be our footstool. Maybe the enemies will prepare a table before us. Maybe we'll be blessed if we go into the enemy city. And so they decide to go into the enemy's city, to the enemy's camp. They go into the enemy's camp, but God already worked it out before they got to the enemy's camp. The enemies heard some Africans. <laughs> the enemies heard some Hittites. And they said, we got to roll on out of here. And when they came into the enemy's camp, the enemy wasn't there. But they took the stuff that the enemy already took in chapter 6. You'll get it later. They were at war with the enemy. So they went into the enemy's tent, got some gold and got some silver and got some clothes and then hid that. Then they went back into the tent, got some gold and some silver and then hid it and then went back. Then they started to think. We're in the enemy's camp. The Lord has blessed four lepers with a skin condition to move into the enemy's camp and be blessed by the enemy's resources. So we can't have a private party. We've got to let somebody else know what the Lord has done for us. If you made it into the enemy's camp and, and the enemy has blessed you with the enemy's stuff, then you need to let somebody know what the Lord